So the next question that we have is, can you give some advice for when I don't feel like worshipping God? Now, don't worry, I know this feeling all too well. But something that we need to be reminded of is that worship is not to gain, but it's to give. It often requires sacrifice. So last year was probably one of the hardest years of my life. A very close family member to me was diagnosed with breast cancer. I ended up going through a really toxic church split, not here, but elsewhere. And I ended up moving house from one side of the country to another. And so during this time, I felt so depressed, so low, upset, angry, and even at times numb. And this was often amplified during worship because I was so aware of the lack of feeling when I see people around me like crying and um, raising their hands in worship and being all joyful. I was just so aware of how numb I felt. But the Holy Spirit um, drew my attention to one song in particular called Worthy of My Song by Phil Wickham. And some of the lyrics go, the way that I feel and the fear that I'm facing doesn't change who you are or what you deserve. I give you my worship because you still deserve it. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy of my song. To worship at that time required a sacrifice of my own feelings, to acknowledge that God was greater. He was greater than the fear, greater than depression, greater than my anxiety and even the numbness in my heart. I may not have always felt like he was, but I knew it intellectually. Sometimes we go into worship uh, to receive blessing and healing and emotional release. And these things are good, but I'm not quite sure that worship is the best place to seek these things. Worship is about laying aside all that we have going on. Our illnesses, our crisis, our burdens and our feelings and our emotions. And choosing instead to turn our attention towards God and focus on him and who he is. So I want to give you a couple of biblical examples. The first is Hezekiah, who was a king of Judah. He had a very close relationship with the Lord and he was even seen as good, right and faithful towards him. But he found himself in a bit of a crisis. So the Assyrians, who had already conquered like the, the northern kingdoms at this point, were now threatening to take Judah, his land. However, the prophet Isaiah came to him with a word from God, which essentially said, don't worry, God's going to fight for you. And despite his pain and his crisis and his circumstance, Hezekiah's response is so beautiful. 2 Kings 19, 14 to 15 says, Hezekiah received a letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, the God of Israel, enthroned above the cherubim, you are God. You alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. He then goes on to present his request before the Lord. So Hezekiah's first response with being faced with threat and, and hearing from God was to glorify and to worship God. When he was faced with this seemingly impossible situation, Hezekiah did what we should all do what was good and what was right before God. He mourned, but he also saw and trusted the Lord. Hezekiah's life, I believe, is a great example of faithfulness and worship to the Lord despite our devastating circumstances. Also, we've got David and his Psalms. So reading some of David's Psalms, you'll find this really confusing transition between Woe is me to bless you, Lord. So Psalm 13 begins with, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? And then ends with, I will sing to the Lord. 
because he has dealt bountifully with me. Psalm 22 begins with, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yet two verses later proclaims, Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. And what about Psalm 61, which begins with, Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call you, when my heart is faint. But then ends with, I will ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day by day or day after day. So David, regardless of his ongoing torment, still knew that God was worthy of his praise. He acknowledged his uh, lamenting before God. He brought it to God, but he also knew that God was worthy of praise. So we need to treat our feelings the same way that Hezekiah and David did in worship. Whether that's fear or anxiety or hurt or pain or numbness in our heart, will we let them suppress our worship? Or are we going to let them be the reason for our worship? Not in some kind of like morbid glorification of suffering where we, you know, whip ourselves silly and whatever, but rather to know that regardless of what's going on in our body and in our mind, that God is enough for us and is still deserving of our worship. So how do we worship when we don't feel like it? Firstly, I'd suggest consider if the lack of joy and if, and if that numbness and depression comes from a place of unconfessed sin, because there cannot be joy where there is sin. And if you find that that is the case, then bring it before God and repent. Secondly, keep in the word of God. Remind yourself of how great God is and all the things that he has done. You cannot worship or even spend time with somebody that you don't know. So learn about God and who he is. And then thirdly, out of that, speak his truth back to him. Those things that you've read about God, repeat it back to him, glorify him, Speak of the things that he's done in your life and thank him, praise him and worship that. Even, even if you don't feel uh, those emotions at the time, acknowledge it intellectually before him. And finally, surrender. This is a really difficult one, but surrender. Surrender the fact that you do not feel. There have been many times during worship where um, I acknowledge that I'm not really feeling it as much as anyone else is, but I have to come to a place where I'm like, but Lord, I still know that you're good and I still know that you're worthy of the lyrics that I'm singing right now. And so I'm going to sing them anyway, because this is about you. It's not about me. So I hope that kind of helps bring into uh, a bit of clarity around that. So firstly, consider if there's any sin that needs to be confessed. Secondly, keep in the word of God. Thirdly, speak his truth back to him and finally surrender. God bless you guys. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any other questions, please email them at ask at vision-church.com. Goodbye.